we're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned, we don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. to get real seeds in, in many ways. Chemtrails, dropping poisons. I mean, all of these things are fact. They're fact. And it is my belief that most of our illnesses come from these environmental harms, right? This pollution, as well as these GMO foods that change genetic DNA. I'm going to show you something in a minute about that. And just eating seed oils and synthetic foods and things that should not be eaten. You know, like industry products that they don't want to go to waste. They transform and uh, in, in a sense, <laughs> they, they, it's like this metamorphosis, right? They take these, I would even argue, poisonous substances and kind of turn them into edible products, right? I think most of our illnesses come from these things personally, but you know, that's just, that's just uh, an opinion. And there's evidence that would suggest these things are more correct than not. But let me show you this real quick here. Uh, climate change uh, creates uh, instability, which creates insecurity in some places. And you can end up, the, the, the fighting in Syria uh, started really as a result of a drought. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a, it, it can actually drive military missions and, and, and force the military to become involved in places and at times uh, where they wouldn't have had, had to otherwise. So you see, they're already trying to imply that military intervention will be needed to address certain climate issues. Now, of course, he's, he's referring to other countries, but we see what they're doing in the news here, ramping up the alleged crisis here when it comes to climate. This is stuff just to keep your eyes open for things that are happening, especially uh, when having conversations with people in the real world that tend to be completely oblivious to some of these things. Uh, let's look at Jane Goodall at a, a, in Davos. And this relates to climate change. Uh, depopulation has a lot to do with climate change as well because their whole view is that there's too many of us on the planet. And we are harming the earth and uh, therefore climate is changing in a way that is unnatural. And let's see what Jane Goodall, you remember the monkey lady, right? Let's see what she has to say. We cannot hide away from human population growth because, you know, it underlies so many of the other problems. All these things we talk about wouldn't be a problem if there, were, if there was the size of population that there was 500 years ago. Wow, 500 years ago, she says. Can you believe that? She said 500, she said, you know what, we wouldn't have the problems we have today if there were populations that uh, were equal to what we saw, say, 500 years ago. Wow. She's bold for saying that. Look at the subtext of that. Savage. Stray savage, man. But these, at this point, the, the climate change movement, it's become a part, basically, of the culture now. So they feel a lot more comfortable making these claims and saying these things because most people are on board with sustainability and this isn't to say we don't have issues in certain areas there is pollution clearly but that's not our doing the people it's being framed as if it's mere human nature's presence but really it's the presence of certain industries i am for protecting the environment i am for uh, being smart when it comes to how one lives in one's environment but all this stuff these people are saying is uh, by design set out to implement slowly but surely and incrementally a type of depopulation.